For Ang Zhang Du, the day of the royal wedding was a day for revenge. He travelled to Northampton armed with a knife and murdered a family of four. These were his victims, Jeff and Helen Ding, and their two daughters, 18-year-old Zing and 12-year-old Alice. To find four people from the same family massacred in their own home uh, was horrendous in itself. But to find that two of those people uh, were young females, the daughters of the household, I find that unforgivable. I, I can't in any way get used to that as a concept. Ang Zhang Du had gone into business with the Dings in the 1990s. They opened up a string of shops selling Chinese medicine. But their relationship turned sour, and after years of legal disputes, Ang Zhang Du faced financial ruin with debts of nearly £90,000. On the day of the murders, he took a bus and headed to the Dings' family home in Wooten. The prosecution said An Zhang Du carried out the murders with ruthless efficiency. He stabbed the two adults in the kitchen, then he went upstairs and attacked their daughters. The jury were also told that afterwards, while he was still in the house, he lay down and fell asleep. The bodies of the victims weren't discovered until two days later. Between them, they'd suffered a total of 51 stab wounds. An Zhang Du fled abroad. A police appeal was sent out to 180 countries. An Zhang Du, who's wanted in connection with a murder inquiry. The doctor of herbal medicine became one of Britain's most wanted men. He was eventually tracked down in Morocco, living rough on a building site. Helen Ding's father and brother traveled from China to hear the evidence in this case. They say An Zhang Du has shown no remorse. Du admitted the killings, but said he was suffering mental illness, and so was guilty of manslaughter. Today, the jury have agreed that this was murder, nothing less. Ben Gagan, BBC News, Northampton. OK, I can confirm today that the man arrested in Morocco uh, on Saturday afternoon is Ang Zhang Du, the suspect in this case. What happens now is the Home Office will take uh, responsibility for the extradition proceedings to start. Uh, and once that starts, they'll have primacy over this case. Uh, once we achieve that uh, extradition completion, then hopefully we'll be brought back to the UK to face trial. And if required to do so, we'll assist and work with the Home Office, but it is their uh, responsibility. Uh, and finally, we have retained uh, or maintained contact with the, uh, the victim's family, both in China and the US, and they've been fully kept up to date with all the circumstances so far. Jeff Eng, Jeff Ding. His wife, Ji Helen Chui, and daughters Zing, 18, and Alice, 12, were stabbed to death at the Northampton home in April 2011. Ang Zhang Du, 54, of Whitnall Road, Coventry, denies four counts of murder but admits killing the Ding family. Northampton Crown Court has heard Mr. Du would not be giving evidence. The Dings were massacred. According to the prosecution, on the afternoon of the 29th of April, the day of the wedding of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, the prosecution claims they were the victims of a carefully planned revenge attack by businessman Mr. Du, who had lost a 10-year legal battle with his former partners Mr. and Mrs. Ding. He was facing a court cost bill of £88,000. His defense will claim all four killings were manslaughter due to loss of control a diminished responsibility. He left the UK after the Ding's deaths and was already en route to Morocco when the bodies were found on 1 May. Post-mortem examinations found that Mr. Ding had been stabbed 23 times. Mrs. Ding 13 times, Nancy had 11 stab wounds, and Alice had 4. Mr. Du was arrested in Morocco in July 2012 and two days later had a 90-minute meeting with British Embassy official Leighton Williams. The court heard Mr. Williams told the court via a Skype link that an emotional Mr. Du said he had had a good life in China and regretted moving to Britain about 10 years ago. He told Mr. Williams he had been in a dispute with a business partner and was awaiting payment. He said that he had gone round on that day just to try and sort the problems out. Mr. Williams told the court he said he was trying to resolve the problems for him. 
He said that he had lost everything. He had been left with nothing. And this was a last-ditch attempt, if you like, to try and solve the problems, Mr. Williams went on. All he told me was that his friend had just laughed in his face. He just said I just went crazy. And at that time he became very emotional and broke down again. At this time he made some gestures with his right hand clenched, asked if he understood what the movement meant. Mr. Williams replied, At the time all I can tell you is what I saw and I saw his right hand clenched and his right hand was moving up and down, as if he was stabbing something. The trial is due to resume on Tuesday. Actually, I first learned from the internet news, and uh, I was completely shocked. I even cannot finish the the news, okay, once I saw the picture, I just, uh, I mean, I cannot believe this a four member all gone. I mean, it's just a complete shock, okay. Um, I cannot accept, you know, the, the reality, basically. And then I think about my parents. If I cannot, you know, I manage that, uh, think about the parents. They lost uh, their, their children, their grandchildren, only one day. How do you describe your thoughts to the person that did this? Brutal. Absolutely brutal. I think that was, those kind of things is just beyond my imagination, and I believe beyond the imagination of any kind of human being. I mean, it's just non-human. How, how are you coping? How do you deal with everything day to day? I. I'm not that confident whether I will, can manage to cope or rebuild my life anymore. I don't think okay, I can o overcome these kind of things because this is you know, you know, my sibling. Okay? It's, it's, it's uh, no way I think. I think my life will be, get like, it's kind of transformative to my life. Okay? I don't think my life will be the same again as before, and uh, I even do not expect myself, okay, will get over with that or cope with that. I guess I what the only choice for me is to live with that. It's uh, compared with my parents, you know, they are in a much worse situation, and the news for them is just much difficult to cope and uh, I mean they their life is probably in worry now I can have to say so the whole f you know the f impact of the family is just too much what's your message to Anjiang Du who's still on the run and anyone who may well be harboring him what would you say to them it is a tough question right very emotional, tough question, I have to say. I mean, for a long time, and even now, I emotionally, I don't want to hear this name, basically. But if he, what I mean, do, okay, if he really did that, so far still suspect, but if he really did that, I have many, many, many questions to ask him. Among them, the most the question that strikes me mostly, you know, I, the only one question that strikes me most is, I want to ask him, how could you step a knife into an innocent girl's heart? Not once, but twice. How could you do that? An innocent girl, you get that in. I mean, I also want to know what he's feeling or whether he has any feeling when he saw the girl's expression. I mean, I hope he gets the answer. Actually, I don't expect I will get a satisfied answer because, because, you know, I mean, that's, uh, if I'm facing him now, now, that's the question I'm going to ask.